The jacket you'll see today is special in many ways, not just because of the effort I put into it, but because it's for someone extra special that is not myself. <laughs> I literally poured all my love into this sewing project and I'm really excited to share with you. Look at this pretty binding inside, it's so beautiful. Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina from LiftingPinsAndNeedles.com. Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing, limitless sewing. And in this special episode, all the sewing I got up to was for my 17 year old son. This might actually be his last year at home. He's on his last year of high school and it's bittersweet. You know, it's just time has flown by so fast. We only have one son. I only had one pregnancy. Not everyone has it real easy. It was really hard for us to be able to have one baby to begin with. So he's always been super, super special and and he's just an amazing boy. When he was little, I would sew so much for him and he wouldn't even know, I mean, he was little. But once he got to be a teenager, he got really picky on what he wanted me to make and such. I have made so many things for him in the past that he's refused to model because, you know, he has his own life. I totally respect. And this time when I asked him, can I make you the new cleft jacket from Love Notions and will you allow the pictures and all of that? He said, okay, okay. So I think the last time you would have seen him on the channel was about two years ago when I made him some t-shirts and joggers. Well, now he's a little bit bigger. <laughs> he's grown, like he's grown so much. He's six feet tall at the moment. Still growing a little bit every now and then. This project was extra special because I know I don't get to do this very often. I went the extra mile and just had a lot of fun adding details to the pattern. So the clef is one that you've already seen. The woman's version was released first in January. And then because of popular demand, people started asking, could there be a kid's version? And there is one now, it's called the treble. <laughs> <laughs> treble clef and the men's version is called base clef. If you look at the line art and the features they are all the same as the woman's clef coat it's just that the sizing and the drafting is different but they all have either a button placket or a zipper opening in the center, a stand-up collar or a hood, kangaroo pockets on the front, one-piece sleeve with a casing and elastic key on the wrist and the same at the bottom of the hem you can put an elastic or a drawstring with a toggle something like that. The back is simple just cut on the fold and a single welt pocket on the chest. I have already filmed a lot of the sewing construction when I made my version and my mum's version back in January. So this time my son wanted the zipper version so I was really really glad because I get to film something different and a feature that I hadn't filmed last time. Because the base clef is a brand new pattern at Love Notions it'll be 24% off through next Monday the 11th of March. The treble clef for kids is also included in the same release date and the same sale. It's a great time to get these patterns for your whole family. If you get one down in terms of sewing and construction, it'll be the same for all of three, pretty much the same. What's different is the sizing. It's really easy to make. You'll see a lot of the sewing in this video and all other content I have around this pattern. So there's a lot of support in this channel here for you to be able to make this and really enjoy it. Please use my affiliate link if my sewing content is helpful for you. That is one way I make an income doing all of this work on YouTube. It doesn't cost you any extra. It just means I receive a small commission. This is a jacket designed for either woven or knit fabric, so either could work. If you were thinking of making this in a knit fabric, I would choose a medium weight, more structured type of knit, like a Ponte Roma, like a Liverpool sweatshirting, an athletic knit, a fleece. Specifically for this one, you don't need that knit to stretch. There are some knit fabrics that don't actually stretch, <laughs> like a lot of sweatshirting. Because the pattern is designed to fit well with woven fabric that doesn't stretch, that's why I say you'll be okay if the neat fabric you choose doesn't stretch that much because you don't need it for fit. Maybe for comfort and it's a little controversial there's this idea that is thrown around in the sewing community a lot that if you work with a neat you might want to size down. I'd be super careful about that because not all neat fabrics are the same, not all of them stretch a lot. If I was making this out of a neat fabric I probably would not size down. My preferred fabric for this one would have been Ponty if I'd made it in a neat. So just have a good think about whether you want to size down if you're going to use a neat or not. I personally wouldn't. I don't really think men like their clothes that fitted. I think extra ease is always welcome for them. They just have another way of living their life I suppose which is much more comfortable. If I'd made this in a neat fabric I still would have stabilized the zipper area. I still would have stabilized the area for the welt pocket and the top of the kangaroo pocket. I would not skip those steps just because it's a neat fabric. I would keep all the sewing techniques exactly the same. For woven fabrics, you can choose so many types like denim, canvas, cotton twill, 
really heavy duty type of waterproof fabric so if you can find them linen linen rayon blend tensile twill wool suiting there's so much that you can do i've chosen this time to make a navy 100 percent linen jacket martin tends to use too much black <laughs> and i've been trying to buy him blue jeans and like blue to slacks and blue trousers and i'm just trying to get him into navy a little bit because you can't just be wearing black all the time right so he does love, like navy so yeah it was a good choice i had quite a big cut about four meters of this 100 percent linen i plan to use that linen to make my sana jacket and my selfa jacket which is the jacket you would have seen in the previous video so we're going to be like twinning if we wear the jacket at the same time because it's the same fabric but it's a totally different style but that was really fun to think up and he's totally fine with that for details on the inside i grabbed a box i have of his old shirts when he was like 10 to 14 i have so many of those little shirts tucked away because at that point he was growing a lot and he never got to wear them that much so they were in pretty, pretty good condition. So he chose out of all those shirts, which one he liked for me to make binding on the inside. And it'll be a memory binding. I love it so much. It looks so pretty on the inside. And the shirt that he chose has a really nice contrast with the navy inside. It's got coral and navy and white. It's really beautiful. So I was quite happy to cut that up and make up all the binding that I needed for the inside of the jacket. That's totally optional, of course. But as I said, I'm. I'm going the extra mile here because I don't get to sew for him often. Other little bits and bobs you'll need for this jacket are fusible interfacing. You need a 28 inch separating zipper. If it's longer than that, just trim some teeth off. That's what I do all the time. If you want to put grommets at the bottom to put your drawstring through, that is something totally optional. As something totally optional that's not in the pattern, you could choose to cover the zipper tape on the inside. The previous video that you would have seen on the channel was all about covering that up <laughs> and I made myself of my own linen tape you can use tool tape you can use bias tape there's many ways that you can do that and if you want yours to look really really special that's something extra that you can add on to the pattern which is not in the pattern but something you might want to consider the sizing goes from extra small to 5x and that goes up to a 58 inch chest and hip the size chart, when you look at it, it's pretty rectangular. It's different to how, the way that we're shaped, of course. But not all men are shaped like that, so you might need to blend sizes anyway. At the chest, you're going to have about 6 to 7 inches of positive ease. At the hips, around the same amount. So there's a good amount of space inside for the person wearing the jacket to wear a lightweight sweater, long sleeve top, that sort of layer underneath. When I took my son's measurements, he was a size large chest and going down towards the bottom at the hem at the hip he's a size extra large he's six feet tall i measured all the pattern pieces the only change i made was to do a half an inch shoulder adjustment narrow shoulder adjustment i thought that's going to be great because i did measure my son's shoulders measured the pattern and thought no this is going to be a little bit too wide for him so because i'm doing custom sewing i do want to make the changes so that it fits as best as it can and i'm really glad i did the narrow shoulder adjustment because it fits really well now and it's still falling off his shoulders a little bit but it is the intended style and my son as I said he's 17 but he's still growing so yeah he, he'll fit in there if he grows a little wider in the next couple of years so that is okay <laughs> I already have a video on the channel showing you how I like to do narrow shoulder adjustments also how I don't like doing it <laughs> so I'll leave that link down below if something helpful because I know a lot of men have the opposite problem where they need their shoulders to be wider than what the pattern has so I think measuring the person's shoulders is going to be something helpful for you to know because you do need that ease there anyway to move and, and, and extend your arms and live your life, especially on a style like this that's meant to be loose and comfortable. So maybe if the person you're sewing for has really wide shoulders, you might want to do the opposite, which is make the shoulders wider or narrower. Everyone's different. The finished length of the jacket is 26 and a half inches. I measured what that was in centimeters because it's just easier for me to know. <laughs> As we have preferences, the person that we're sewing for will also have preferences in length. I measured from here at the back, the nape of the neck down, and I showed Martin, is this a length that you like? And he's like, yep, that's, that's a length I like. So I didn't make the jacket longer. What I would consider though is measuring the sleeves because that's not so much personal preference, that's just the length of your sleeves. I measured the sleeves also, I didn't make any changes there. Now consider he's six feet tall. Maybe the sleeves run a little long considering this was drafted for a five foot eight man. 
So just make sure you measure the sleeves so you don't end up with really, really long sleeves. I did film a lot of the sewing section. There are areas I did not film because I already have the content, like the welt pocket. That technique has its own video. I'll link that down below because nothing changes. It's all the same. I'm focusing on general construction. The extra things I added onto the jacket, I added a partial lining on the back piece, which was super easy. That enclosed the shoulders. And I'm focusing on the zipper. You would already have seen how I covered the zipper tape in the previous standalone technique video. So there is a lot on the channel that is going to help you put this together. So let's see. Here are the larger pieces of the base clef. This is the front over here. You can see that little mark right there. I have actually interfaced 5 eighths of an inch from the edge of the center to stabilize where the zipper is going to go. This one's going to be different to the one I made because the ones I made previously had the placket. It's also an option in the bust clef, but I wanted to use a different option this time and my son also wanted a zipper. So there we have it. It's meant to be 28 inches. Mine is about 30 or 31, so I'm, I'm going to have some excess to trim away on the top, which I'm never mad about. The back is simple cut on the fold. On both of these armholes, you're going to have single notches. The sleeve is symmetrical. The armholes are the same for the front and the back and so are the sleeves. Whichever one you set in first, then you set in the other one. Here are more pieces for the bust clef jacket. They are pretty similar to the women's jacket. The difference with this sleeve compared to the women's jacket is that the armhole is symmetrical. So it was basically a pattern piece like this that you cut on the fold twice. I just extended it to create a full sleeve piece because it's easier to cut. Because there's no bust to deal with here, we don't really need the front armhole to be deeper, you know, so it's, it's quite easier to set in and all of that because the shaping is different. But otherwise, these pieces here for the welt pocket are the same. That's the little interfacing I'm going to fuse on the right chest area where the mark is. That's the pocket bag. This is the welt pocket piece that's interfaced. Kangaroo pocket, I always interface that area to stabilize the pocket entrance and my collar piece is also interfaced. I'm using linen, it's medium weight, I do want it to have the structure so I am interfacing all the pieces I think that need it. I spent some minutes making it. I gave my son a choice of some of his old shirts that are cute and in great condition <laughs> and he chose this one so I made a lot of bias tape and I'm gonna bind all the edges of the straight seams of the sleeve, the side seams, the shoulder seams it's just going to be something nice to have inside that is not going to be seen from the outside, but it's going to make the jacket special. I'm going to take my sweet time to bind the side seams and the shoulder seams, the sleeve seams. But before I do that, I'm going to stay stitch the neckline because I am going to be moving the fabric around while I do the binding. So I do want to protect this so that it's conserving the same shape so that when it comes time to sew in the collar, this hasn't stretched out. I'm doing this close to the edge, smaller than the 3 8 seam allowance we're going to use later with a regular stitch length going from the shoulder into the center. I'm going to show you how I'm not going to do the binding, although this is how a lot of people do the binding. I just don't think the effort is worth it or makes any difference in the long run. So basically you would have your binding, you would open this up, align it to the right side here, sew it there in that little crease. I'm not going to sew it, I'm just going to pin it to show you. After doing all that stitch along the whole length of whatever you're binding, then you would take this, it's already got the fold, and you would wrap it around, and then you would pin it again, and then you would sew it again. I don't see the point, it's just too many seams. There's really no point. I don't do it like that. So what I do is I just take my binding, which is really easy to work with. It's a lightweight cotton. It presses well, so I'm not struggling to manage this. And I'm just going to fold it like that. And I'm just going to wrap the raw edge in one go. And I'm going to pin it, making sure I'm catching it on the other side. This is going to achieve the purpose of protecting the raw area and having it look nice. And then I'm just going to go and sew on the edge all in one go. I'm going to do this all in one seam instead of doing two seams with the method I've shown you that a lot of people do, I'm just not gonna do it like that. Here's the side seam you just saw me sewing. It's perfectly neat. It's wrapping the raw edge, it's being caught on both sides. I always make sure I'm working on the right side of the fabric here because this is the side that's going to be visible when you sew your seam. Is this going to be pressed in like that on the other side? So that's where I want the neatest part to be. This other side, 
it doesn't really matter that much because it's going to be folded under. So I always make sure I have the right side looking up at me when I'm binding and pinning and that this is the side I'm looking at when I'm top stitching. This is one of the sleeve seams already sewn and it looks so beautiful. Now here at the bottom, I'm also going to bind that. The colorful binding won't be seen once the hem is turned up because it's got one inch hem allowance and it will also be a casing for an elastic. I am binding everything and I wouldn't just want to serge the edge after doing all of this work. So I've run out of bias tape but I was able to cut some not on the bias just for this section. This is completely straight, there's no curve to go around so you can get away with doing it on the straight of grain if it's for an area that's straight. I got this little piece from the yoke of the shirt I deconstructed and that's what I'm going to use to wrap around this area and it will be absolutely fine. I'm having so much fun, I know it's making the length of my project a lot longer. <laughs> All of this initial process of binding everything and getting everything to look beautiful is just so satisfying. And then when I get to sewing the garment actually, I'll just have to do seams because the edges have already been done so it won't take that long once I'm done with the binding. You can see that on this side of the front I have already sewn my work pocket. It's one of the first things I did. I have a tutorial on the channel showing you this step by step in a lot of detail. It's really fun. I really enjoyed it. I've been having fun and now I'm gonna sew the shoulder seams. I had an idea that came later during the project. I'm glad it happened before I bound the edges of the shoulders because I was gonna do that initially but then I thought what if I do a partial lining on the back? So so I had a little bit of my shirt left over that I made the bias tape from. So I just used the back pattern piece and just cut a small amount. So I'm not getting the full armhole here but everything else is the same. This is going to lie loose inside the jacket and it's just going to give it a little bit, bit more support and structure but just on the back. It's not a proper lining, it's just something partial on the inside and I think it's going to look really cool. For this edge I bound it with blue bias tape I made out of blue cotton. I have some blue shirting material that I used to make bias tape from so that's that. So what I've got here are just the back and the two fronts on top right sides together and now I'm gonna get this partial lining and put this one right side to wrong side over here because this is the wrong side of the front. So that's how that's gonna look and I'm gonna align all those three layers together and sew them. So this is something that's going to enclose the shoulder seams and get them to look really neat on the inside. That's why I didn't need to bind them. So this is just something extra I'm doing. It's not part of the pattern. It doesn't really change the pattern. It's still gonna look the same from the outside. It's just that I'm adding this extra little piece on the back. You can see that it doesn't reach the full armhole. It's sort of just a little past the halfway point and it's cut from the same back piece. Remember this is just a little detail I'm adding otherwise you could just be sewing the shoulder seams like normal. I just have this extra layer on top. I would not do this if I was making this in a stable knit which is another option of the pattern. I would just do this for a woven. I rarely get to sew for my son so when it happens I go all out. That's why I'm doing this extra detail. Okay so that's there. Now when we flip this over to the back side where it's going to live it's going to take the seam allowances with it and that's all going to be enclosed in there. So this is how the back is going to look. Seam allowances come towards the back, they're enclosed within that seam, it's a super neat finish. And over here, I'm just going to base this edge of this partial lining over to the armhole and when I sew the sleeve on, it'll be catching all of this. So it'll be caught there, it won't be just loose flopping around, although in this middle area, it will just be lying loose like that. And I think it's going to look really cool. This is the collar piece, mine is interface, it's a long rectangle. And on one of the long ends, I've just folded it up by 3 8 so that's all done. On the edge that's extended, that's what's going to go pinned to the neckline. My neckline has this extra layer right here, and I've just basted those two layers together because I'm going to have that partial lining. So that's what you see there, and I've matched up the center backs. Over here, the edge of the collar is going to reach the edge here of the center front. You can see my selvage edge there, and the little bit I have interface for the zipper later. And over here it's the same. Along here you're going to have marks that are going to match the shoulder seam. So that matches and the collar piece is exactly the same length as the neckline as you can see there. Which is the goal. I did stay stitch in the beginning so everything's looking good. And now this is a really simple 3 8 of an inch seam.
Now I'm snipping into this curved neckline, quite curved all the way around, so I don't think this is a step you should skip if you want your collar to lay smoothly. Now linen is really easy to finger press, so I'm just using my fingers to press the seam allowance up towards the collar like that. From this side it's looking very neat. Now what we need to do is just do a memory crease, you can see I've made mine there, I did it with my fingers as well. Take this folded edge and come over here where the seam is and just cover it and then just fold it like this and make a little mark and there we can see it. If you have a fabric that doesn't press with your fingers go ahead and make a little mark or put a pin and I'm gonna do the same over here and then we're gonna do something similar at the bottom with the hem. This is gonna help us know where the zipper is gonna go. So when we sew the zipper it's gonna go close to this little fold over there. Just about a quarter of an inch short from up to here and then following the center front all the way down I have already done the buttonhole there that's going to allow the drawstring to come out. Side seams are sewn, I have bound the edge right there. I have used a navy to bind the hem that could be a visible area when the jacket moves and opens up with the wind or something. And I definitely did not want the colorful binding to be seen when you wear the jacket because it might clash with the clothes underneath. Now the hem allowance is an inch so I'm also going to fold that and just make a really good mark there with my fingers. And that's where the bottom of the zipper is going to reach right there. Here we have a jacket semi-assembled on the table. The jacket is right sides up. What I've done here is pin the zipper along one of the sides. It doesn't matter which side you do first, just choose whatever side. And we have the zipper right sides together with the jacket. That means that when you look at here on the top, the zipper pull, the zipper pull is touching the right side of the jacket right there. Now my zipper is longer than what I need. I have quite a bit to trim off over there. Here is the top area of the jacket. Here is the collar seam right there. And you can see the zipper goes past there. Up, up to that middle point that I did some finger pressing with, I have a pin up to there. And I've marked on both sides with chalk so that I end up putting my zipper nice and even at the same level. So I've just hand basted that along up to there, going all the way down over here. That area that I pressed with my fingers there, that's where the end of the zipper is going to reach. Now this rest of the hem that's hanging off is going to be wrapped over up to here and then sewn there when we sew the zipper. And that's how the bottom's going to be finished. Super easy. It's the same concept over here. When I have the zipper in there, I'm going to end up wrapping this over. And when I sew the zipper in, in, that's going to enclose that area but first I have to get rid of some teeth I have to trim that away and sort out how that's going to be tucked in there neatly so I haven't done that yet so what I've done is just hand baste that there now I want to go ahead and hand baste the other side so I can have both of them hand basted on now I've turned my jacket wrong sides out and this is how easy it is to know how to baste on the other side of the zipper. We're just going to extend this zipper like this and now all we need to do is bring this other edge and sew it over here. Making sure that you have the right side of the zipper against the right side of the jacket but we're going to have the same type of seam. I have this mark up here so that I know I'm at the same level and at the bottom I'm going to reach the same spot and so this is the second stage of hand basting. Once I've got it hand basted I'm going to come back and trim extra teeth. Okay I've got my zipper hand basted on on both sides. Everything matches here on the top, the seams, at the bottom it's all matching. I'm very happy with that. Now on the top these lines mark where the collar is going to be folded into itself. So I want to cut above here like 5 eighths of an inch or so. I want to push this down because it's really hard to put this back if you cut the zipper. I have done that before and it's really hard to get it back in. So I'm just gonna I'm gonna push it down out of the way and then I'm gonna trim. So I'm just gonna go in between some zipper teeth here and cut away. So now I'm just going to use these pliers and just literally pull teeth out. Some come out pretty easily and others you really have to pull. Okay, zipper teeth are gone, thankfully. <laughs> I have a pin marking where the collar is going to be folded in. And I want my teeth a little below that. So you can see I've got maybe an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch below that. And what I want to do with this extra tape is fold it diagonally this way sort of out of the way right there. So this is all going to be hidden in that seam. I want to give it a few hand tacks to keep it there so it doesn't move anywhere. Just takes a few seconds and then this is going to be out of the way for good. I'm going to bring my collar over, wrap around the zipper tape over here. The fold should reach like a hair below it so it covers it. And I'm talking about a little hair over it. And then we're going to have the zipper tape in between there and all that is going to be hidden inside. So that's how the top of the collar is finished and now we need to do something similar with the bottom only here it's much shorter. 
All we need to do here is grab the extra seam allowance that's hanging underneath and just bring it forward over there, wrapping around the zipper tape in the same way as the collar. It's just that this is much shorter. So I'm gonna do one side first and then I'm gonna do the other side. I have my zipper presser foot over here with the bulk of the press foot this way so that I have good access to this side of the zipper tape. And this edge right there, I'm gonna guide it against the edge of the zipper tape right here. And that's gonna give me a good distance from the zipper teeth so neatly. I'm gonna bring my needle down here and just bring this pull up out of the way. And then I'm gonna keep going all the way down. I'm guiding the edge of the presser foot against the edge of the zipper tape there. You can see that seam at the bottom and then when we flip this to this other side that's how it's going to look like over here we're going to have that buttonhole for the drawstring and that's how neat this is going to look this is why i didn't want to bind this with my printed tape because this could be visible when you wear the jacket so i wanted to keep it nice and discreet that's why it's blue over here then over here with the collar piece it'll be the same once we pull this out like this you can see the zipper comes from underneath there and it's enclosed very neat so i'm gonna repeat this the same on the other side this time i'm starting from the bottom and going up to the top just following along using the same guide i'm using which is the edge of the presser foot against the edge of the zipper tape coming up to the top i'm going to stop here put my needle in lift everything up and get this pull out of the way here we get to the collar area At this point, the zipper could be finished if you wanted. One thing that I opted to do was leave this right up to the selvage here. So under there, you can see my selvage. But if you hadn't done that, you could have searched this before and that would be a finished edge. And then your zipper tape would sort of cover that searched edge and that's a neat enough finish. So that could be the end right there. You can see the collar is enclosing the top part of the zipper tape and the hem is enclosing the bottom part of the zipper tape very neat from this side as well but I'm gonna go the extra mile I do want to cover this you could use twill tape I would use 3 8 of an inch wide twill tape if I had some I just don't have any of that I made myself a piece of tape that is on the straight of grain it's not on the bias that I'm gonna use to cover this zipper tape now this is the next stage and this is where I'm gonna do a lot of top stitching and this is gonna be the final part you can see I've got that tape nicely pressed and neat and double here I've hand basted that in place that's about the distance that you're going to see the top stitching on this side that's going to hold this tape in place the tape is behind the collar I basted this edge of the collar that was still loose it's covering the seam all over here here's the tape again at the bottom we have the tape coming behind the hem and I've also hand basted the hem so it's going to be a pretty long seam Here is my son's beautiful base clay from Love Notions. So gorgeous, blue linen is everything. And I just loved working with it. It was easy to cut, to press. It saved me so many trips to the ironing board because I could finger press. So that's always really nice. You can see the zipper goes all the way up to there. And then inside we have the collar that was sewn here at the last step, including the step when I was sewing the tape that was covering the zipper tape over here. So that was done in one go. Here you can see how the shoulder seams are enclosed with this half lining at the back. You can see this armhole seam is bound afterwards and then this is pressed open and bound with this beautiful, beautiful binding. So pretty. The back is simple, it's just one piece. On here, this side, we have the welt pocket and it's all very, very neat inside. I actually have navy fusible interfacing, so that's what I've used there. And that looks really neat. I was able to bind that top edge that was left raw. First steps I did, that was very fast and easy to get done with. And then down here, we have the hem with the casing, the kangaroo pockets. In my other cleft jacket video, I filmed how to sew the kangaroo pockets. I did it the same. And here you can see that I bound the edge with navy cotton instead of the colorful one because when he moves and lives his life, I didn't want any colors to be seen right here on the center. I did actually put the elastic in the casing of the hem right here. That is the jacket. It's so, so pretty. <laughs> in the grand scheme of things, it didn't take that long to put together. 
What took long to put together was the binding, but I find that a really relaxing process. I don't mind it at all. And knowing that it was gonna make the jacket super special made me super happy when I was sewing it. So we have that half lining. That was something extra that I added. It gives the jacket a little more structure here on this area. And so I decided to do that just because I had enough of the little shirt to work with. The edge here is bound with navy bias tape and it's caught right here in the armhole. So that was easy. I just created the pattern piece using the back piece of the jacket, but not the whole armhole, as you can see right there. You can do that as well. Bound seams over on the sleeve, here at the bottom of the hem as well. It's just so pretty. I'm very fortunate to have a model that was willing to have action shots of <laughs> filming. So he will walk around and model it for you. I also got some beautiful pictures. So let's see it styled one way because yeah, it would have been too much to ask him many looks. <laughs> this is my son's base clef jacket from Love Notions. This is a size L at the shoulders and then blended out to an extra large down at the hip. And he's there showing a little bit of the binding I did inside. The fabric is 100% linen and I've chosen the zipper version. There's also a button placket that you can sew instead. One small adjustment I made was to do a narrow shoulder adjustment and I figured that out after measuring him and the pattern pieces. And and he's going to be able to wear this in so many ways. He was really missing something that he could dress up and down. Up here on the front are biggish kangaroo pockets. You can see the casing and the drawstring at the bottom with some toggles. He like this original length. I measured it against him what the finished length would be. So I didn't make it any longer. He's a bit tall. Here is the beautiful welt pocket there, which is more for decoration. Maybe he could fit something in there. I don't think he's going to use it. And the zipper is really, really neat. Inside, I've covered the zipper tape with some linen tape. There is the welt pocket from the inside. It's very neat, it was very fun to do. And you can see the stand-up collar looking really nice there, zipped up. It's a really beautiful jacket. He really loves it. It's gonna be a staple. I think it looks great with jeans. All the effort I made was totally worth it. And I'm really, really happy I got to sew something for him. I love how this turned out. My dad has already requested one for him. He's coming to see me in June, July, so I hope I can make one for him as well. And there's nothing nicer than sewing something extra special for someone that's in your life that you love. I really do enjoy it and I wish I could do it more. So this was super special for me. And I know he's gonna love this jacket and wear it for a very long time. That's why I sewed it with really good quality materials and extra finishing touches so that he can wear it for a long time and it made me extra happy. I'm gonna try to swipe the smile off my face because this has given me so much endorphins, I can't tell you. <laughs> Don't forget to grab your base clef while it's on sale through next Monday the 11th. All the information is always in the description box and in the pinned comment. That's all from me and I'll see you back on this channel with more sewing content very soon. Bye.